All right, guys, I realized that I've just been kind of doing update post post everything that I've been doing, but I realized that that's not really gonna work to show you, hey, here's my blue boat. So I'm gonna show and talk a little bit about my paint, a little bit of backstory on it and where we're at right now. So the paint I use, I was actually driving to a race over in St. John past a car dealership in Moses Lake and I looked over there and I see this Toyota FJ Cruiser in a blue. I'm like, that right there is the color that I want. When I joined the sport, there was Dan Morrison in the green Wicked and there was Kyle Patrick in the very orange, uh, bright orange team that he's running. And I like those kind of bright, but not metallic-y or kind of showy, but they're obviously very bright, kind of almost like a bright flat color. So when I saw the FJ Cruiser, I'm like, well, I guess I'll, <laughs> we got a green boat, we got an orange boat, I'll be the blue boat. So um, that's how I, I actually discovered the color. So it's called Voodoo Blue. It's a Toyota color from the FJ Cruiser and the color code, if you ever want to do anything in that color, it's 8T6. I just uh, went down to Napa and got my paint. So. I'm not a painter. I've never been showed how to paint. I've never been showed how to set up a gun. And that's probably my limiting factor is I've never really done it other than just kind of learning and going as I, as I go. So I will show you some things that I don't like uh, when I think I got to figure out. It'll be kind of hard. You can see the little bit of texture in there. I don't think that this is necessarily orange peel. You hear about that, but there's just a little bit of texture to it. And kind of doing a little bit of homework last night. I think I had too much air pressure in my gun. I can regulate it at the um, at my compressor, but I think I had just a little bit too much air pressure um, at my gun. So I'm going to turn that down today when I put on the color and see if that makes any difference. Just to have it lay on there a little bit smoother. I don't think I got any runs in it. I typically do. I, like I said, I'm not good, but I don't care. This is a race boat. It's going to get hammered on. It's not a show boat. So I just want it to be blue and then throw some decals on it and go race. So I'm not too overly concerned about it. Uh, another thing like this will probably drive some people nuts is right here. You can see all these little dimples. This, these little pieces were just a million little tacks. So every little bump that you see, there was a tack weld there just to get this thing because I couldn't weld it or this thing would twist and contort. So yeah, you can see those little dimples. I don't care. I, I can live with that. Um, I put a little bit of Bondo in there, but it probably would have taken five, five layers of it to get it just right. And I don't care. I don't have the time and I can live with it. That's cool. So anyway, the primer is on and went on yesterday and I am getting ready to lay the blue on today. And um, you can kind of see the little spots where there's a little bit of Bondo there. I was kind of contemplating, do I do one more layer of, of primer? I don't know what the right answer is, but I'm gonna just go for it and throw the blue on. So I'm gonna just see what happens in a test spot. If I touched up with just a little bit, of very light sanding, if I can get rid of some of those little, we'll call it orange peel for sake of argument, orange peel, and we'll get going on the blue. Here we go.
All right, guys, so I think that worked out pretty good. I could actually feel it while I was sanding. I could feel the kind of the texture from those little, from the orange peel, we're gonna call it. And I think it actually turned out pretty good. It just feels much smoother now. There's still some, and I just did a very light sanding. I didn't wanna take any of the, uh, the primer off. I did through here, a couple spots like that. Oh well, it's a raised boat like I said. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now I just cleaned it off with uh, cleans rags and water. I don't know, I don't know how you're supposed to do that. Obviously I probably don't wanna put um, any kind of cleaner on it like acetone or anything to get that dust off there. So I just used a rag and water and kept rinsing it out multiple times. Got it nice and dust free. So let's talk really quick about my setup and what I use. First as this bench is just a mess, I'm just going trying to get this stuff done. So this is the, Spray I use, but good old fashioned Lowe's, probably a Husky, I know there's not even a brand on it. It's a Husky, I believe. I've got a big one and this smaller one that I've been using here. For the uh, primer, I've always heard you're supposed to use self etching primer, they didn't have any. This is what I use straight from Napa, epoxy primer in gray, and it's a three part. And I realized something on the ratios, like, you know, the, the little here, I'll show the spin around, the little mixers with all the ratios back here. Well, I'm supposed to do this eight to four to one, but there's not an eight to four to one um, thing, cheater column back here to use. So I was trying to figure out in my brain, all right, I did pretty good at math. This should be pretty easy to do, but I, I was like struggling with it. I'm like, okay, so I know that this cup here is a 26 ounce cup. So I, if I can get somewhere in the realm of that, so I just started, okay, what if I multiply uh, eight times two, that would give me 16 and I convert that to ounces. So I have to do 16 ounces and then I take the four, four times two would be eight ounces and one times two would be two ounces. So that's exactly what I did. And I just came up with 16 ounces, eight ounces, and two ounces, and that came up to 24, I believe, ounces on there. So a full cup for measuring. So I'm like, hey, that works pretty good. Just kind of figure out, okay, that would be 13 ounces if I just did a one-to-one -one ratio. All right, 12, 13, yeah. Uh, 13 ounces if I just did one, one batch of it and then just multiply it by two or three or however multiply those numbers by two or three or however many you want to get to ounces so that seemed to work out pretty good so the paint this is what i'm using it is i and i don't even know what urethane enamel is but it is a single stage meaning i'm not going to do a base coat a main coat and then a top coat it's just one and done i don't have time or the patience to do multiple layers i don't have wet sanding and buffing and cutting or whatever you do to paint one one shot and i'm done so it's the same exact ratio eight to four to one so that's gonna be pretty simple but it is a urethane enamel uh is the paint that i'm using so i'm gonna get to mixing this get this uh blue on here the boat's about ready to make a major transformation love it here we go let's turn this thing jolly roger blue All right, guys, the first coat is on. I'm pretty happy with it. I think I learned something mid coat. Um, and then the fact that I was kind of moving too fast with the gun and I wasn't doing a, I was just kind of all over the place and I wasn't doing this nice kind of a slow, steady pace until I got to this side and this thing turned out a lot better. This thing is, you can kind of see some thin spots here and there and I can see, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up. But I think I need to slow, slow my gun movement down. I think I've got the pressures and everything set up right. So I'm gonna um, try to slow down on this coat. The paint says to wait until it is hand slicked to the recoat. So I'm ready to do that. One other thing, um, I don't know if you saw me in the time lapse, I had to move this cardboard around. 
is overspray on this bottom paint. So when I'm down here spraying this panel, you can see I get overspray up there. And the reason I can't tape that off like really well is that nothing sticks to that bottom paint. And my only other option was to put masking tape, you know, just a little bit up that edge and mask that, but then I'd have a, a strip of non-covered stuff. So once this stuff is all done, I'm gonna go up there and try to clean that off. I did that with the primer, it worked pretty good. So I did build this big uh, cardboard kind of to keep most of it out and it did a pretty good job, but I don't know, there's nothing I need to do. There's nothing that sticks to that bottom paint. It's a kind of amazing stuff. If you ever come out to the racetrack, feel the bottom of the boat. It's weird, it's, just, uh, it's a weird bottom coating and it works. So. I am going to uh, move the cardboard around, get uh, coat number two on. This thing is, uh, it's blue. Pretty awesome, pretty excited. Here we go. Right, guys well the paint job is done here it is in all its blueness I guess we should say I'm overall honestly pretty happy like I said this is not show quality paint I never expected it to be it never will be when I'm doing it I can promise you that but overall I'm happy I don't see any big big screw-ups no big runs I got one um, drip over there I was holding the gun over it dripped onto the bow let that dry and see if we can fix that. But I'm gonna to try to do a mini reveal where I'm, I love like carbon fiber when you pull it out of the mold, boom, it's like a Christmas present or unmasking. So I'm gonna to try to see if I can situate the camera and pull this, uh, all the masking out of here and see if we can make that kind of cool and we'll see how that works. All right, I think this is gonna be about as good of an angle that we can get. So I'm just gonna start pulling this stuff out um, I let this stuff dry until it was pretty much slick to my hand. I know it's not cured cured yet, but it's good enough that any dust or anything like that isn't going to necessarily stick on it. It should blow off. I was just too antsy. It's too exciting to not look to see what the finished uh, end result is going to look like. And I thought that you all might appreciate that. So here we go. This is going to be... Well, not anticlimactic, but it's uh, it's better than nothing when you get to peel this stuff off and kind of see 
you know, the, the contrast between the painted section and or, you know, I got a little bit of through spray. Kind of expected that in a few spots. We'll clean that up. Let me get all this stuff out of here. You got to go and when you're before you paint, you got to put tape on all of your holes like this is the water outlet. Otherwise, paint will just shoot right through there and make it a mess. But here it is. Pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty stoked. Let me peel some of these off. And the other thing is uh, the pump. That's all masked off at the back. So that will be kind of cool to, to undo that and see how the transom area looks like. I don't remember if I actually did a video showing how I sealed up this pump. I did it on the uh, the other boat that we built for Chris. So I didn't, I don't think I really talked too much about that on how I did with this boat. But um, before we continue on, I'd like to thank my sponsors. Okay, now that we're done with that, we can just keep on moving. And how, how am I going to do this? Now let me see if I can move the boat around so you can watch this coming undone because it kind of ties it all up together. All right, I think this might work decently to kind of reveal what this is all going to look like. I did, I don't, I man, I don't actually honestly remember if I did a video showing this uh, transom seal and how I did it because it was different than anything I've ever done. It's kind of one thing I do is I I kind of evolve and make changes as I go with how I do things, i.e. how I seal these pumps in, how I make this this ring that seals the, the rubber in there and all that kind of stuff. I'm constantly changing the way I do it and maybe that's a, oops, see some through spray got through there. Uh, whatever, not a huge deal. Just a little bit of a cleanup I gotta do, but it would be better if there wasn't any, but this is always kind of cool. You get to see the final. A little bit of tape there. All right, I'm pretty stoked. This thing is ready to go together. I, man, I'm pretty happy. Oh yeah, there's some through spray up there. Let me grab the phone and I'll kind of do a quick walk around and we'll finish this video up. So here it is, the final, see like right there, just got a little bit of through spray came through the, uh, through the masking tape, no big deal, but that turned out awesome. I'm loving the transom area. The paint, like I said, it's, it's not perfect, but it's good enough for me. It's good enough for what I wanted. It is, it, uh, got exactly what my end goal was a little bit of through spray got to clean up there clean up there it's hard to seal everything perfectly but not much work to do so this is awesome i'm gonna let this thing cook i'm leaving on a trip tonight i have a wedding on saturday i won't get back here till sunday which is actually the day that you guys will see this this i do my uploads on sunday no matter what time i film it once the race season starts going, I'll probably start doing two a week instead of just this one, but it kind of makes sense right now. Sunday's my upload day, about two o'clock on Pacific time. So on Sunday, when I get back, all this should be nice and cured and completely dry. And it is time to reassemble this thing. I am pretty excited. Got the old 500 over there under the blanket or multiple layers of blankets. And I'm pretty happy with this thing. Let me know what you think about old, uh, Jolly Rogers paint booth and on my quality of uh, work. I know that there's probably some of you out there that are very established painters. I'm not one of them. I just do what I got to do to get the job done and uh, save myself some time, save myself some money of paying somebody to do, uh, do this job when I don't need it to be perfect anyway. So anyway, I'm going to sign off. Yeah, I'm going to clean up a little bit more and get ready to uh, go on this trip. I honestly, I'm excited to come back so that I can get to uh, get to going on assembling this thing for the first time because that's when it's going to really transform. I can't wait to see that raw carbon against this blue, uh, the blue or the carbon windscreen, the carbon splash guards and the fin. I can't wait to see that all together. It's going to look beautiful. And not to mention the, the uh, JRE 500 cubic inch billet small block in this thing. It's all coming together. We're getting there. Stand by. More videos coming.